up. This thing is fucking sick. Now break. <laughs> fucking <laughs> yeah. And that, but how easy does it do it? That's oh, it just, it just loves it. Yeah. It just wants more and more. Yeah. What do you, well. want, do you want to get out? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you ever want to get out? Okay, so we're here in Brisbane, looking over the brand new Ford Ranger Raptor. I'm sitting on the edge of my seat. I'm absolutely frothing to get in this vehicle. As you guys know, we had a Raptor previously on the channel. The next gen Raptor is an absolute beast. So that's enough talk. Let's just get in this thing. <laughs> and we're off. <laughs> Holy pickup. How good is it? So me and Maddie are sharing this Raptor today. We're just doing our on-road driving. And it just, I just got out of the driver's seat. Maddie's driving now. It just, the way that the, the uh, live valves handle the road conditions, it does not feel like you're driving a four-wheel drive at all. It's so like rigid and it's like a, it's sort of like stiff and like go-karty. Like well, it's- We're both coming out of lifted Forbies where if you even think about going quick around a corner, you feel like you're in a boat <laughs> that's gonna fall over. Yeah. And this thing is like, it's like driving a sports car is the only way to describe it. Um, just crazy, to be honest. It's, it's unbelievable how it's handling the road. If only we could get around this bloke. <laughs> <laughs> but this thing just is a daily... The best. Like Gary. The best. If you love your four-wheel drives, you couldn't get a nicer daily. Yep. Um, especially then if you love a beach run or you just want to go to the four-wheel drive parks with your mates on the weekend. If you weren't setting up a rig that's going to weigh three and a half, four tonne to travel around Australia, this is ha has to be the ultimate all round. And if you're coming from a, a performance background and you had like an XR8 or XR6 or any sort of Commodore and you kind of want to get into four wheel driving, but you still like that fun yeah, factor, this is, this, this is the car you need to buy. 100%, especially if you, you're just your typical Hilux Ranger Triton owner and it's the family car for around the week, and then you just want something for the beach, you will be smiling from ear to ear in this thing. If you buy any other, if you got the money and you buy any other dual cab. You're crazy. Yeah, you're a silly, silly man. Or woman. <laughs> All right, let's pop the bonnet on the Raptor. No gas struts. That's a fail. Land cruiser spec. <laughs> Look how much room there is to do things. So much, activities. so much room for activities. Okay, so under the bonnet, obviously you've got our air box and everything here, our air intake, Garrett Turbo down there, the other one's down here on the other side. But this engine for the aftermarket industry is just going to be insane. So being able to um, possibly do some intercooler piping, bigger intercooler, upgrade all these to, to some nice aluminium ones. I think the modifications you're going to be able to do to this car is going to be so epic. So much room in here for, and everything's kind of easy to get to. But got electronic fans in this as well. So no more fan on the front of the motor. There's a bunch of cool little Easter eggs around the car. I'm not going to show you them all, but I'll show you one. Built Ford Tough just above the radiator here. But if you look around, there's also the one on the tailgate with the measuring, uh, the measurements there on the tailgate, so you can measure things. But there's a bunch of cool little Easter eggs around the vehicle if you look hard enough for them when you get yours to find those sorts of things that Ford's put in. So for your auxiliary switches in the roof, I'm pretty sure it's this, these circuits here. 
uh, just under the bonnet because um, there's six relays here so I'm pretty sure that's what that's for. I could be wrong but I'm pretty sure that's what that's for. It's so hard to explain how this vehicle feels when you drive it on road. It is so nimble and so agile that it's I've never experienced that in a four-wheel drive before. It's just, it's just it stays flat through the corners. Uh, the power on road is unbelievable. So we're about to go and do the off-road driving now, but I just wanted to just emphasize how good this thing would be for a daily. And it's just, it is still so much fun on the road as off-road as well. And you could have some pretty serious fun on this in this thing on a track day, just because of the way that the suspension um, just operates with the vehicle. It's just, it's just sick. It just, it, you feel like you're driving a sports car. It's just, I've never felt that in a four wheel drive before, how stable it is with the uh, 2.5 inch live valves, that it's constantly got those position sensors running at like 500, checks at like 500 times a second to know that you are actually in the right ride zone. So we're in the, we're in the depths of the, uh, <laughs> under the car here. So there's the Fox live valve shocks just there 2.5 inch so you have your little uh, cable coming off there the side of that um, fixture on the suspension got your exhaust big bash plate under the front there massive aluminium lower control arms aluminium upper control arms Righto, coming down. Righto, coming down to the back. You got your big watts linkage there. But look at this bracing in the diff. Like how strong and engineered that thing is to take the punishment. Got your spare just here. So you do have your uh, massive spare here under the back. Got your shocks just there. Exhaust comes through the side just here and same on the other side. So both exhausts are real. It's not like one pretend one They both they both function All right, we'll come around to the front of the shocks here Got massive piggyback covers just there to protect the shock uh, I'm pretty sure this must be a position sensor for the rear suspension you can see your other fox shock over there very nicely finished off those shocks are all right we're gonna go to the back and maddie's gonna do exhaust exa exa notes for me <laughs> i'm gonna rev it to be harder than you <laughs> maddie maddie's maddie's got to find it first yeah. <laughs> Couple of hours. <laughs> oh, door open to me. Oh, it's open. That's your exhaust one. Yeah. So then you just go, you just keep pressing exhaust and yeah, it goes, yeah. goes through I'm not one. used to this. <laughs> <laughs> this is We've got quiet. So this is going to uh, cruise around town. We've got normal. And we've got sport mode. Then we got Baja. We need to get it on the truck. Yeah, we do. That does not do it justice. Nah, it needs to sing. Not even close. <laughs> Let's go for a walk around the truck. So obviously we'll start at, I want to start at the back. Everyone starts at the front. I'm starting at the back this time. So tub, got your 12 volt outlet back here. So it's 180 watt max, 12 volt outlet. 12 watt outlet. You got 12 volt outlet just there. Do have all your, if you're a tradie, for your clamps. This is in Raptor as well. Black badge looks absolutely sick on this thing. It's like a, it's like a bronzy metallic here on the back. Got your camera, Ranger stamp in the back of the Raptor here. Raptor, obviously there. LED tail lights got your little light down here they've actually moved it so it's not long it's no longer on the cab that's weird um so yeah they've moved it down to the back here obviously you've got our recovery points we've been in the mud today exhaust got your tow hitch two and a half ton towing spare wheel to drop the spare wheel from out underneath the bottom so 
the drop tailgate. So you do have the spring in the back here as well to assist lifting it. It's got the rubber liner in here. Little Easter egg, you've got a measuring tape along the back of the, the tailgate just here. It goes up to 130 centimeters by the look of it. Super easy to close, very lightweight. Coming around to the side, this has got the optional graphics pack. I don't really like the graphics pack. I think I'd just get it with just Raptor across the back there. Blind spot radar in the new Raptor as well, as well as all your parking sensors down here. So moving down to wheels and tires, we're running a 17 inch rim. This isn't the bead lock. You can get a bead lock that goes in behind that, uh, but you can option that if you want it and it's for off-road use only. So a 17 with a 33 inch tire on the new Raptor. The running boards, very strong than in that in that material similar to the old ones that um like rough textured um paint got all these vents here on the side they're actually all functional here and on the bonnet so all the vents are functional to allow that heat to escape out of the engine bay when you're sending it full noise got the c-clamp headlights here big ford grill on the front got your camera just here and you got a little uh, washer just there so you can wash your camera big bash plate underneath Always goes faster. So me and Maddie trying to film at the same time <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see how these would go with a bead lock and how low you could actually lower the pressures in this thing I'm also keen to see the range of ARB accessories that will be out for this truck so hopefully they're released soon So guys, just want to go through some of the different functions and features. Like, obviously it's very similar to Wild Track or Everest, but there's so much more technical hardware in the Raptor over what Everest or Wild Track and, and the higher premium ranges get. So in here, you have steering modes, you have suspension setups, you have exhaust notes. R mode is for you to set all your settings and then R mode is always how you like to drive the vehicle. So you can set all your parameters, hold the R mode down, and it will set all those parameters in the vehicle because that's the way that you like to drive the car. So here on the steering wheel with some of these modes, so we'll go through some of the modes here. We have the exhaust mode. So we have quiet, which is the first mode. Then we have normal, sport, and then we have Baja. So that, that controls the exhaust valves. So... And then we have our steering mode, which will, we can go across here. So normal, then we have comfort steering, and then we have sport steering as well. And then here on suspension setups, we have normal dampening, sport dampening, and then obviously Baja off-road mode here as well. So you can do all them from the steering wheel. And then obviously your R mode is set for when you set all your parameters, you set R mode, and then... Yeah, but I like the boost gauges they have here for each turbo. So you have your uh, your bar pressure just there, which is sick. So you can kind of see where it's holding at. Have all your drive mode functions just down here as well. But like there is just so much to talk about inside this vehicle that it's just, yeah, it would take me forever to go through every single drive mode and, and the modes and functions and everything. But very similar to Wild Track and Everest, but you just get all these other off-road modes. So it's pretty cool press the off-road mode here so it comes up with the screen of we have front locker rear locker downhill descent control um, but you can also use that uphill as well so that's like a tr it's called trail control so you've got your camera here in the front with your front steering or your obviously aircon stuff down here you do have the integrated brake controller in the Raptor as well do have magnesium paddle shifters here on the outside of the steering wheel uh, still got your cup holders just here as well um, all your functions there on the your lights door functions and then you have all your windscreen wipers and stuff obviously blinkers and stuff here on the side of the steering wheel got your red marker here auxiliary switches my absolute favorite thing about these new next gen ranges is the auxiliary switches up the top here and then you got obviously your lighting just here for your lights and off No, no lights in this one. And then the same on this side. 
The seats are inspired by the F22 Raptor. And this is actually like a plastic branded pressed uh, fitting here in the interior. But just like the, the honeycomb design through here, through the center of the dash, the, the red that runs around the air conditioner here, wireless charge pad down here, USB-C and your normal USB. You got the B&O sound system in this thing. It is so sick. Sounds so good. The seats are super comfortable. They definitely hold you in position while you're driving the vehicle. Feels 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 like you're being you're being squeezed into the seat and it's it's such a like you feel planted if that's if that's the word I can use. You feel like you are part of the car when you sit in it and you're not kind of moving all over the place. So I definitely do like that about how the seating arrangement is in the next gen Raptor. Got like this suede material that runs through the interior as well across the top of the dash, right across the other side, across the doors. And then you've got the honeycomb pattern down along the side here. I do like the new handles, very similar to my F truck, how you kind of grab it to open the door. And at least that way you actually have hold of it. Unlike where the old ones used to be out here, you'd pull that and then the door can fly open if you're on a bit of an incline. Here you're actually, you, you have control of the door, which is, which is nice. But yeah, you do still have your, your top, top, sorry. You still do have your little cubby up here. It's all covered in like a suede material. Got your little pocket down here. Glove box, obviously. Center console. Back seats have all been shaped uh, differently than standard Ranger. So they're all embolstered and stuff. You do have that center drop down. Raptor does have all your lane assist and radar cruise and all the rest of the other features that the other wild track comes with. But overall, the interior is just a nice, nice place to be. This thing as a daily would be friggin' awesome. It's so cool sitting in here and seeing the, the little nostril vents up the top there. Functional vents, letting heat out of that awesome V6 twin turbo engine. Up the front here, you do have the USB for your cameras and, and whatnot that you wanna put on the dash as well, which is cool, so I can plug a um, GoPro on the dash if you're doing some trails or even a, if you want a, just a traffic camera or something up there um, for incidents. But yeah, that's sick for GoPros and stuff on the windscreen for doing trips, having it in this location here. Gonna do some like low speed driving through some moguls and stuff now. So we've got a trail control function on the screen here between your front and rear diff lock. And what that allows you to do is actually drive slowly through these moguls, like, like cruise control, but off-road. So here we go, we're gonna, pl gonna play with this thing now. So you got a little, your little cruise control set dial here on the steering wheel, and then you can just go through and just adjust it up. And it's just crawling through this thing on its own. Articulation on this thing is absolutely sick. And so I asked the guys at Ford, where did they actually get the 50 mil increase from the actual Everest and Ranger? And it was in the, like the control arms, that's where they gained the width. And so I'm assuming that's the same on Raptor. Uh, section here is just some slow driving, very similar area to where we were in the Everest uh, yesterday. So bringing the Raptor down here, just testing all the drive modes out. I'm currently in, in off-road, I'm just in full high. This thing is so advanced, like, there is so much going on and trying to get my head around everything, but it is so capable. This off-road trail control is absolutely wicked for setting your speed. So I'm gonna hit that now, and I'm gonna set my speed here on the thing. I've got two kilometers, and I can adjust that so two kilometers is the lowest you can go on the trail control for, for downhill. But I can just sit here, feet off the pedals, cruising down, go up to 2.5, go a little bit faster. Yeah, good. Killing it. <laughs> right now we're gonna go uphill. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it the berry. What you wanna do down there, bud, is uh, put it into Baja mode so you can open up the exhaust a bit there and then give it a bit of stick up this one and I'm obviously going all the way up to the top again. Baja mode. Gonna the exhaust. Gonna go to four high, put it back into neutral, shift back into four high. 
What we got? Baja mode on. This thing just wants to sing. What <laughs> she wants to sing. <laughs> <laughs> I think they've been washing them each day, so let's get this thing putrid. Uh, now we're in mud, mud ruts. Mud and ruts. So we just went through our first little mud puddle. I felt bad. I don't even want to get this thing dirty just quietly, but um, we'll get it muddy. It's not ours. Let's rip in. Mm. Got it set on uh, trial control at the moment and using the uh, basically like your uh, speed control on the highway, cruise control, but for off road. to go fast. Concern? You love going sideways, mate. lost on the road. I don't know how we're going to go out. This is a GoPro off. off. <laughs> They're both yours anyway. You're filming me, I'm filming you. I'll film you, film me. Oh, film you, film me. I'll film you, film me. <laughs> <laughs> mate, you wait till you see some of the camera work I'll do. Oh. Up on the brake. So really get the braking done and then just smooth. Once the nose turns in, then you can just move on the acceleration. Looking all the way through the corner. And then basically you got the grip and now you can build it up. Then as you come through here, a little lift, get the nose in, then back on the gas, drive it all the way through here, keep accelerating, then just a little lift just to get the nose in, then basically on the gas. Giddy up. Trying to stay away from the cushion on the outside because that's very soft and loose. So you want to try and stay in the train tracks. As you come up here, as you start braking, I'll sort of trail the brake in a little bit. So as you're coming in, just braking, ease off the brakes, balance it with a little bit of acceleration through here. Then braking, ease off the brake, then don't cut, bit of a lip, smooth on the acceleration, then build it up. Then what happens up here, boys? Come on, you all seen it. Sideways. <laughs> so basically from here, you're braking as you're turning in. So that slides the back out, then trying to stay off the gas, and then I'll tell you when to pick it up. So probably pick up a little bit of gas then, then back off it again to see how the cam will slide you down, yep. then pick up the acceleration, and away we go. And then really getting to the feel the shocks work along here. Then basically hard on the brakes, easing off the brakes, turning it in, smooth with the acceleration, and then balance it all the way through here now. Keep it going, keep it going. Bit of a bump coming up. Bump, braking, easing off the brakes. Tip the nose in, not too much steering. Patient, building up the gas. Then looking all the way through the corner. Then basically feeding the gas on all the way through. Now giddy up. And then coming out of here. Then hard on the brakes, as you can see the brake bumps. Easing off the brakes so it doesn't understeer too much. Get the car straight, little lift over the jolt, then set yourself up square, and then launch yourself over the jump flat out. And then once you go past the finish, we lift off, and this is my chance to breathe, pull the car down, then we'll change cars, change modes, and then go from there. One of my best chats today, especially after lunch. <laughs> self rating's good, isn't it? Well you done. self rate yourself, don't you? All the time. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's go give it a shot. That's it, keep it going now. Now a little bit of a break. And then wait for the gas. Now back on the gas, now feed it on. Now flat out. Flat out now, flat out, flat out, flat out, flat out, flat out. Now brake. That's it, then shot the brake, now turn it in. Now put a little bit of gas, a bit more. Now flat. 
That's it, keep it going, put off the gas, wait for it to grip, wait for it, now boot it. Get it going now, keep it going, keep it going, put it grip. That's it, now back on the gas, flood out now, flood out, flood out. Keep it going now, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Now brake, get harder, get harder, get harder, get harder, get harder on the brakes. Now wait, not too hard, now smooth, get a brake. Now patient, patient, don't cut. Now back on the gas. That's it, keep it going all the way through here now. So sick. Get it straight. That's it. Flood out now. Flood out. That's it. Keep it going now. Keep it going. Keep it going. Now braking. That's it. Braking. Ease off the brake. Now looking through the corner. Now smooth with acceleration. That's it. Looking through. Now more gas. That's it. Now a little brake. Now back up the gas. Flood out. Flood out. Flood out. That's it. Keep it going. Off the gas now. Wait for it. Wait for it. Now flood out. Keep it going now. Keep it going. 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 Straighten the wheel up. That's it. Now back on the gas. Straighten the wheel. Flat out. Yeah. There you go. Uh, <laughs> 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 Production car shouldn't do this sort of stuff. No. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> and that. But how easy does it do? That's oh, the thing. Oh, just it just loves it. Yeah. It just wants more and more. Yeah. How's that for fun? So sick. Yeah. Oh, that is mental. Well done. <laughs> I'm buying one. <laughs> Sold. Sold. So wrapping up my final thoughts on the next gen Raptor. What an absolute incredible piece of engineering. Uh, props absolutely to the Ford engineers and the design team for that vehicle. Um, you guys have now absolutely nailed the engine. It is an absolute weapon, that thing. I just it's just it's just such an incredible car and you guys know that I, I love Fords and that but to to actually talk to the the employees of Ford who build the vehicles and just to understand the whole process was just absolutely awesome and especially with such a high-tech range of variant as the Raptor it was just absolutely awesome and I, I very much enjoyed thrashing it what an awesome time that was so just want to say a big thank you to ford for inviting me to the next gen raptor launch i had an absolute blast thank you very much and i guess if there's a final point that i can put with the next gen raptor is uh one thing i wish that it had because it is such an amazing vehicle um but how hard you can push that thing i'd love to see if ford performance can integrate either a three point, four point or, or five point style of harness in, in that cab um, as an option, um, as you can, you can option for the beadlock wheels on, on that variant, on the Raptor, but I would love to see them give you the option for harnesses in the seat 
just because the thing is such a weapon and you can push that vehicle so hard. So yeah, I'd love to see Ford Performance harnesses as an option um, on the future Raptor variants. So anyway, guys, I bought one. <laughs> so there you have it. I, I straight after that, um, I yeah confirmed that my deposit was the right move to make and I absolutely fell in love with that car and I'm going to very much enjoy um, bringing it onto the channel, doing the delivery of the vehicle and starting to do some, some modifications to it and bringing you guys all the content with the next gen Raptor. So can't wait. I'm still uh, waiting for my ETA on mine and when it's going to arrive, but it shouldn't be too far away. So thanks for watching guys. Catch us the next one. See yous.